In the news this week, medicinal marijuana to be trialled following government approval. Plus, uni students fear tuition fee increase after the federal budget. And corrective services toughen up on juveniles following riots at the detention centre. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lum and Danielle Staniskov. Good evening. There's a breakthrough on the use of medicinal marijuana after years of public debate. A state-based company has been licensed to grow medicinal marijuana despite the controversy. Some doctors and patients welcomed the trial. Cassandra Elliott has the story. The controversial subject surrounding legalising medicinal marijuana is in the news again. This time questions were raised after a licence was granted to grow marijuana in the state. Australian Medical Association WA President Dr Andrew Miller sets the record straight. The thing that uh, people need to understand about medicinal cannabis is that it's not cannabis, it's a derivative of it that doesn't make you high. The AMA assured the public that by licensing a company in Perth to cultivate medicinal marijuana, it is not approving an illicit drug. It will only be used to treat a select group of patients with certain illnesses. Jan is a chronic pain sufferer who hopes that this changes so doctors can prescribe the drug for her and others in constant pain. I have chronic severe disabling pain arising from a full length spinal injury, nerve damage from a car accident. I'm actually on Oxycontin but I'm allergic to it and there's nothing else I can have so I'm on a very low dose. Although Jan's not a sufferer of the two conditions that will be treated by the drug, she hopes it could be tried for other conditions like hers. Meanwhile, Dr Miller encourages people to talk to their GP to seek a better alternative. Cassandra Elliott, WAMN News. With the federal budget looming, parents and students are bracing the possibility of more cuts to tertiary education, with uni fees set to rise. On the other hand, housing affordability remains a pressing issue for all. Reporter Nelson Liu has a preview on the budget. Nelson, what can we expect from the government? Danny, the federal government has a bright outlook for the nation's economy ahead of next week's federal budget, but not everyone will be pleased. Federal Treasurer Scott Morrison is remaining tight-lipped on budget inclusions, with limited said about its plans, but university students are set to receive the brunt of the government's bid for savings. Students will be slugged with higher fees, while universities will be facing major funding cuts, expected to save $2.8 billion. Student representatives aren't happy with the change. It's ridiculous that you know the fees are continuing to rise when in a lot of other countries are either free or very, very low. Also among discussed budget measures is the government's aim to make housing cheaper for Australians, with a reported tax on foreign property investors as part of a wider housing affordability package. There have also been no word about previous discussions involving superannuation to help young people pay for a new home deposit. Experts are concerned about the budget, despite government's hopes to make the right choices for Australians around the cost of living. The real issue that Australia faces is immediate but also it's long term and that's the fact that we can't appear to balance our books. We're spending more than we're earning. The government's budget will be handed down on Tuesday night. Ivan? Nelson, thanks. Corrective Services Minister Frank Logan has responded strongly to the riot in Bankshire Hill Juvenile Detention Centre. During the incident, seven teenage inmates aged 15 to 18 set fire to a bin as well as smashing windows and security cameras. The incident came to a head when the Special Operations Group with shields and helmets entered the facility. They've used pepper spray and stun grenades to persify the inmates. The State Government of Western Australia is not going to accept that a handful of young juveniles at Banksia Hill believe they can do whatever they like. Police were required to defuse an explosive device during a house raid at Casarina, where guns, drugs and cash were seized. Detectives executed a search warrant following inquiries into alleged deprivation of liberty and assault of a 21-year-old woman. Three people were taken into custody during the raid, with two charged by police. Further inquiries led to a raid in a home in Parmelia, where more drugs were seized. It's very concerning that anyone would have possession of illegal firearms and it's very concerned that anyone would have possession and actually install an improvised explosive device, especially in a suburban setting. Uh, we're very pleased to have been able to take some illegal firearms off the streets. The Fremantle Mayor election race begins with new candidate Ra Stewart announced her intention to run for office. During a feature interview, she explained what motivated her to compete against incumbent Mayor Brad Pettit. Despite the uphill battle, Ms Stewart is not deterred to take part in the race.
I plan to provide a voice for the rest of the community so we can get some balance back on council. Youth, the current unemployment rate for youth in the city of Fremantle is about 15% according to the last ABS figures. Uh, our elderly people and senior citizens and families I think have been underrepresented by council today. There's been a twist in the French election with presidential candidate Emmanuel Macron's campaign emails leaked into the public. The event came days before polling as Mr Macron will be competing with National Front candidate Marine Le Pen. In a statement, the movement claimed that some of the documents on social media are false as they were mixed in with authentic files. North Korea might resume nuclear testing after accusing the CIA and South Korea plotting to assassinate Kim Jong-un. A statement from the ministry says that intelligence services intended to use biochemical substances during a public ceremonial event in Pyongyang to assassinate the leader. This comes as tensions between North Korea and the West continue to rise, with belligerent rhetoric coming from both sides. And finally this week, Mount Hawthorne has been taken over by a giant flash mob wearing onesies as part of the street and lane festival. The mob's sudden funky dance certainly attracted attention as the crowd paused and watched on. The annual street festival also offered a full day of free entertainment for the whole family. What a way to end a week. <laughs> yeah. okay, and those are the top stories you need to know this week. We have the latest news on our website and Facebook. Until next week, good night. Good night.